Every day, over 80,000 people travel into Wellington CBD. But how do they get there? Well, some of these people travel via bike. Even more walk to the most walkable city in New Zealand. What about vehicles? Like most growing cities, it's the majority. 58% of these people travel by car every day. But in 2018, with economic and environmental consideration, this had to change. A greater connection had to be achieved. Initially proposed in 2008 for the Wellington Regional Rail Plan, the project is known as the Wellington Metro Upgrade Programme. And its purpose is to facilitate the development of a new timetable creating a faster frequency of trains, able to depart Wellington every 15 minutes, as well as preparing the lines for future rail development. The linchpin of this plan being a full signalling upgrade to the network, otherwise known as... WUMP. Um, this is Programme 6. A, so WAMP 6A. Like we're pretty good at engineering, we're not so good at naming projects, I think that's fair to say. In rail networks, signalling is a system that uses coloured lights displayed on the side of the track to convey speed and directional information to a train. Signalling is critical to keeping trains running safely and efficiently. A complex system of signal boxes are found all along the tracks and, until now, were controlled manually using a 1930s style lever system from an office based at Wellington train station. This was known as A-Box. This process needed to be completely digitised, with all signals in Wellington replaced. Success is that no one even knows we're here. Um, if we do our job well and we plan it through and we get it all right, trains will run every day, nobody will know that we've been in. That's really what it's about. So, the goal is simple. We need to get more people into Wellington City each day. Executing this project, however, was going to be a lot more difficult. How will Kiwi Rail go about this? But let's go back for a minute. In the very early morning, the railway yards at Wellington look almost romantic. On the 19th of June, 1937, Wellington in New Zealand's largest building has just been completed and opens its doors to the public. Wellington train station. <coughs> the population of the city was 150,000 and growing. There were fewer vehicles, fewer people and fewer trains. Since then, the population of Wellington has nearly tripled and with that, so has the traffic. So in essence, this project really is about being able to get more trains into Wellington. When we talk about a complex project, we've got a very constrained part of the city. The layout in Wellington, if you imagine it from above, that was designed in the 30s. That's not how you would lay out a part of the network like this now. So we had to move tracks around, add new places for tracks to cross over, and also space things out as best we could. So to be able to get in and do this work, it is like a big game of chess. Think a few moves ahead before you move each piece on the board, because there's going to be repercussions. And after we've made each move, we can return it to service. Trains can run, everyone can get to work the next day. This meant the majority of work would have to be done under the cover of darkness, working nights and through the holidays. So to begin, they needed a team. We had Damien, who's our, our program manager, um, who's been with this project since its inception. Uh, my overall responsibility is for the successful delivery of the new signalling system, getting it built with minimal disruption. And then Ollie and Matt, so our project manager and our project engineer. So we had a really, really, really complex track and we were right up against it. To get this work done and hand the trains back Tuesday morning for the public, the only way is to work around the clock. We had people from Downer helping us with a lot of our civil works. Most of the key issues have been around uh, underground services in this area, so we had to come through and map all the services before we break ground. One of the biggest concerns when you're doing earthworks is what you're going to find when you open up the ground. We had uh, Siemens who are our lead signals supplier. So the railway in, in the Wellington area is built up of lots of different systems. The challenge is to ensure that it all kind of stitches together um, and we can implement it essentially first time without, a, um, without an issue. The team needed a wealth of experience, expertise and determination to ensure the project would go without a hitch. Although that this is a relatively small station by international standards, it's a challenging job. Whenever work was being done on the lines at Wellington Station, all tracks had to be shut down, from the city to the wider upper. So every aspect of the operation had to be precise. 
This meant that 6A was a fully digitized project. A full 3D model of the site was created so that all teams were able to efficiently plan each next move before it happened. But even with the technology, they wouldn't know what was in the ground until they started digging. Reclaimed land is land that's been reclaimed from the sea. You only have to look at a map now of, of Wellington from above. A lot of the area we're standing on now, it's all land that's been reclaimed. All of the excavation works we've had oversight from our archaeologists. We've got to take the time and, and care to make sure that we're protecting things that might have been forgotten about, that we're unearthing. The project would be completed in stages. First, Kiwi Rail would turn off all power to the network so that Downer could remove wire. Kiwi Rail would then come in to remove track from the ground before handing back to Downer who would prep each area, build the formation and ballast so that Kiwi Rail could return to install tracks. Whilst all this was happening, Siemens were meticulously building the new signals all over the station. Kiwi Rail signalling teams would then come through to make all signalling systems safe for the current trains. On Christmas Day 2024, the manual signalling system that had been running since the 1930s had its final train arrive safely at Wellington Station, bringing the end to the Lever Bay System A box and bringing in a new era for safety on the network. Over the seven years that the Wellington Metro upgrade program has taken place, sacrifice was a constant factor and this project was no different. Through long nights, lost holidays, and not to mention Wellington's ever-changing weather, teams worked under strict time constraints, all whilst keeping disruptions to a minimum. We asked the guys to give up their Christmas holidays, so when Wellington shuts down and everyone has their two weeks at the beach, the guys will be here 24-7 around the clock. Got a three-year-old daughter. In the end of the day, you just know you're doing it for them to provide them a good life. Got um, a wife and three kids. They uh, love it when I'm home and hate it when I leave. This is a once-in-a-career job for the Sydney engineers that we've had involved. It brings people from all around the world. We've had a really an excellent team on this one. They're giving up their time with their family, with their friends, tirelessly going above and beyond, making sure that people are fed, making sure that people are hydrated. The final piece of the puzzle would be for Siemens to put the new signalling system in for the future. It would happen during an 18-day shutdown of all trains over the summer break. This Christmas work will be the last major block of line for the Wellington Station project. Come the 13th of January, we'll be handing back an operational new signalling system to the people of Wellington. On the 12th of January, 2025, the job was finally complete and ready for trains to begin running once again, controlled by the new cutting edge signalling system, keeping Wellington bound commuters safe on their way to work. These changes to the network mean that over 2,000 trains are able to come into the station each week. I think that like, the measure of success, you know, I said was nobody even knows we've done it. And nobody really knows we've done it. So incredibly proud of the team and incredibly proud to be able to stand here and, and explain a little bit more about the project because I have to. If you'd heard about it, uh, we wouldn't have been very successful. So proud of everything the, the team have done. It's awesome when you get to work with just really smart, just really good people. It's an amazing accomplishment. This project took over 400,000 hours to complete using 106 kilometres of cable. During the process, a mammoth 10,000 hot meals were supplied and three project babies arrived. Over the coming years, Kiwi Rail will work to finish the final piece of the puzzle, upgrading the power system on the network to be able to bring in new trains for the future. For more than 155 years, rail has played a critical role in New Zealand's transport system. So as a city like Wellington grows, it's the job of Kiwi Rail to continue growing with it.